Assalamu alaikum. This is chapter number one. This is for chapter number 1.2, which is multimedia. So, this is 1.2 multimedia. And we will be discussing bitmap images, vector graphics, sound files. And in sound files, we'll be discussing sampling, sampling rate, sampling resolution, right? So, first we'll start with bitmap images. So bitmap images, as we all are very aware of images, right? Pictures, we take them almost every day. We upload them on social media accounts and they're a big part of a lot of our lives, right? So how are they stored, right? So first of all, something you need to be aware of is that the basic building block of them is pixels, right? And pixels can be of many different shapes as it has been written here that they can take different shapes right and what is a pixel so pixel is picture element that is the smallest thing that can be shown on your screen right so if you're talking about monitors they are displaying pixels as well uh, a grid of those pixels are also known as screen resolution right so we'll be discussing that as well okay so first of all at least eight bits per pixel are needed to code a colored image right and this gives you a possible combination of 256 colors, right? And it has varying intensity of blue, green, and red elements. And you can use those three basic building block elements to create new colors, right? And true color requires three bytes per pixel. So every pixel will have three bytes. Bytes one bit, oh sorry, one byte equals to eight bits. Eight bits, right? So three bytes equals to 24 bits per pixel for true color right for true color so this is a very simple calculation right and the number of bits used to represent a pixel is called the color depth and something you need to be aware about as it is written over here right i'm going to use a darker pen to show 2 to the number of bits so 2 to the number of bits equals to number of possible colors right so number of possible colors right and okay so now we move on in terms of images we need to distinguish between bit depth and color depth right so these are two different terms right so we'll be discussing those two the number of bits that are used to represent a single pixel is known as the bit depth and to represent a single pixel will determine the color depth of that pixel as the bit depth increases the number of possible colors can be represented also increases so you're increasing the bit depth you're increasing the number of possible colors right so now we have to consider two things so the image resolution and the screen resolution right so the images like an image is shown here right so it is going to have an image resolution so it refers to the number of pixels that make up a specific image for example an image can consider a, uh, uh, dimensions are given for the number of pixels right so if you're talking about a picture that is showing on the whole of your computer screen so this is your normal computer screen this is 1920 by 1080 right so a picture which is displaying on the whole thing will have a image resolution of 1920 by 1080p as well as your screen resolution will be of 1920 by 1080p as well because it's going to be covering the whole screen so screen resolution refers to the number of horizontal pixels and the number of vertical pixels that make up a screen display right and this is an uh, uh, this is an example of an image that has been given here right okay so you can tell those images right you're very well aware of tilting those images right and there's something known as pixel density as well so we do not need to know how to calculate pixel density but we should be aware of what pixel density is right so first of all if you're looking at it right so when we zoom in images right so there's a reason there's a reason that when you keep on zooming into the image right so you seem to find individual pixels that you can see right so that is caused by pixel uh, pixelation that we will study later on but first of all why is that so right so the number of pixels per square inch is smaller causing deterioration in the image quality right so you see less pixels per inch 
that is why the image deteriorates when you keep on zooming inside right so we do not need to know how to calculate the pixel density right and another thing that you can see here from picture a to picture e right so it keeps on getting fuzzy fuzzy being pixelated over here right this is because they have different pixel densities right these are more pixels per inch these are less pixels per inch and if you keep on zooming this to a single point like this yellow thing so this is going to become more pixelated i can show it this way because look how pixelated it looks right now i have zoomed it in a lot but when i go back it still looks better than this if i go to e e even looks much worse so this is how pixelation affects how you look at images right so the main drawback of using high resolution images is the increase in file size so when you'll have more pixels per inch so when you're storing them into file Im files right so it's going to take up more size right and of course when you are increasing so there's a limitation to how many pictures you can store like if you had old digital cameras or even new digital cameras they use sd cards right so there's a limited amount even though if you can take 5000 pictures that is still something limited right so now we'll move on to calculating the bitmap image file sizes right so you can estimate a bitmap image file size so how is that so right so let us go over this example right so a full screen with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 which is the full hd resolution as we call it it has a, a, an, a bit depth of 24 so 1920 by 1080 by 24 so this is the total number of bits for the full screen image so you can see that a bit depth of 24 here refers to 24 bits per pixel right so 1920 by 1080 p uh, 1920 by 1080 is the total number of pixels on the screen each pixel requires 24 bits that is why you multiply 24 right so that is your bit count right so you divide it by 8 which brings you to this number and that is your byte count right and then if you're going to divide it by let us assume that you are dividing it by 1024 which is the real standard right so that is going to give you 5.933 which is the kilobyte to kb byte that is the difference you'll study in chapter one which uh, chapter 1.1 in which you're going to dis uh, differentiate between those two right so if you're just going to divide it by thousand you're going to get 6.222 mb but you're going to get 5.933 when you're going to divide it by 1024 right so that is bitmap image calculation right so first of all uh, and lastly we need to be aware that this size may be a little bit more than you calculated now why is that so that is because it is going to consider uh, contain a file header so the file header will contain items such as the file type which kind of a type of a file it is the file size the image resolution the bit depth and then any kind of compression if you have used it used on that file right so it's going uh, the file header will also name the type of con uh, type of compression that you have used right so now we'll move on to vector graphics right so vector graphics are images that use 2d points to describe lines and curves their and their properties that are grouped to form geometric shapes so first of all vector graphics use formulae use mathematical formulae to describe how lines can be manipulated curves can be manipulated to create shapes right so you can create a happy face by having two circles a curve and another circle right so when you're going to be trying to make this through a vector graphic right so you're going to be defining how the circle is made how this circle is made how this curve is made and how this circle is made right so you're going to manipulate formula as if you're aware there's a, a certain equation for the circle there are equations for curves so you're going to manipulate those right and these can be designed using cad software computer aided design software or using an application which uses draw, a drawing canvas on the screen right okay so a vector graphic contains a drawing list that is included in its file header we discussed file header for bitmap images there are file headers for vector graphics as well right so it will contain a drawing list that is made up of the command commands used for each object so this circle here will be an object this circle will here be an object this will be an object this will be an object right so the commands used to manipulate these will be there the attributes that define the properties that make up each object so the colors basically right so 
the colors that you have the radius the thickness the style of each line and all those stuff the relative position of each object will also need to be included so if you what does relative image mean since the, you are working with mathematical formula right so you're gonna have your three dimensional axis as well so you will have the relative position from the x axis from the y axis from the z axis so this is what it means right and the dimensions of the objects are not defined but the relative positions of the objects to the other final in the final graphic need to be defined and the biggest advantage of using vector graphics is the scalability for it right so if you create a vector graphic you can easily increase the size without having problems such as pixelation as we discussed lastly right so now we'll, we are going to make a comparison between vector graphics and bitmap images right so here are some uh, differences so vector graphics are made up of geometric shapes which require attributes whereas bitmap images are made up of tiny pixels of different colors right so to alternate the design it is necessary to change each shape but here it is possible to edit each pixel to change the design of the image right and vector graphics do not require large file size because they are made up of shapes right and but bitmap images require more because they are made up of a matrix of pixels right and since they use uh, mathematical formula right you cannot represent very realistic things in a vector graphic image whereas bitmap images as we all click we can show our faces so those are very realistic right and then there are examples of file formats for each of these right okay so now you need to be aware about when to choose a vector graphic when to choose a bitmap image right so vector graphic is uh, okay so there are multiple conditions here right let's go over those right so if the image needs to be resized a lot so vector graphic could be the best option because the scalability is really great because it does not get pixelated right so and does the image need to be drawn to scale so according to a scale you can't just uh, um, i mean you click a bitmap image you cannot just increase the size to represent it actual human size right if i'm taking my own picture i won't have such a big picture that represents the whole size of my body and it's right next to me so you use a vector graphic in those situations but when you require an image to look real so bitmap images are more realistic so you use that are there file re restriction so if there are file restrictions you need to be aware about what files you can use right so according to those file formats that you have known here right so you're going to choose the type here right okay so another thing is that a very good question that usually comes is there's a company that has to create a logo what kind of graphics does it use right what kind of picture would it use so here it is given that we are going to use a vector graphic so there are multiple reasons to that okay so since it is a company right you're going to have to transfer the picture between the boss the employees the designers right so you're going to keep having prototype images for the logo right so you're going to have to transfer them so vector graphic one it is small in size it can be easily transferred between the company another thing so of course if you hire a company and you're creating a logo you're going to market the logo right so you're going to have it on billboards you're going to have it on maybe cars you're going to have it on buildings so there's going to be a difference in size of each of those logos right and since it is a logo you're going to be using a vector graphic right and then when you have this vector graphic you can easily scale it to fit the size of a mobile cover or a size of a building or a size of a billboard or size of a back of a car so that is when your vector graphic is the best option to choose but if you have to have a picture of the team right so you're going to use a bitmap image because people in a team are realistic you want them if you are going to introduce them you need to have a realistic picture of them right so this is the basic introduction to multimedia bitmap images vector images the calculations for bitmap images is part of the syllabus which we just went over there is no calculation related to vector graphics thank you so much for watching